Hello audience, it is I Swagta making a video response to a video the YouTube user Dreamcast Guy made back in 2014. The video in question is entitled How Manhunt and Bully Are Connected. Rockstar Theory in parentheses. The video mostly consists of Dreamcast Guy making the claim that Jimmy Hopkins is in actuality a younger version of James Earl Cash. James Earl Cash being the main protagonist of the first Manhunt game. Now you might be saying, hey Swagto, this video is kinda old, so why would you make a video about it now? Well, for one, the video has been on my radar for quite a while now. I did consider making a video response to it back in 2015, but I forgot all about it. I then found the video again in 2016, but I yet again forgot to make my video response. But now, all of a sudden, in the year 2018, some viewers of mine have sent me this video and they, like many of you, are fans of Bully and or Manhunt, so I guess I'll give my two cents on it. Anyway, without any further ado, roll the tape. Yes. Stop. Uh, sorry. Intellectual stuff. What's up guys, Dreamcast Guy here. So recently I've been playing through some of the older Rockstar titles, notably Manhunt and Bully. Both very interesting titles in the Rockstar universe, but as I played through them, I started to notice eerie similarities. Let me go over the plot of both of these in case you have never played these amazing titles. Dreamcast Guy begins his video by summarizing the storyline and gameplay elements of both Bully and Manhunt. It does take him a couple of minutes to get to the evidence part. And when he does get to it, he begins to show a tendency of quickly jumping from vague connection to other vague connection. One of the first claims Dreamcast Guy makes in this video is that Bully is set in the year 1995. Now if you're anyway near familiar with how intentionally vague Bully's timeline is, you'll know that this is a pretty hefty claim to make. So what's the evidence? These are the same person, James Hopkins and James Earl Cash are the same person. Now let me explain how you go from childhood bully to murder wow. machine in just a few short years. As bully opens, the time period is quite unclear. People dress like it's the 50s, talk like it's the 80s, the computers say it's the 90s, but flyers say it's the year 2000. What year is it? I think this is specifically done on purpose by the developers to basically say this school doesn't actually have a time period. It's every school. It's your high school. It's your kid's high school. Everybody's going to deal with these problems. But f*** the developers. I'm pinning this at 1995. That's what one of the computers says specifically in the arcade. A lot of the stuff in the time period fits what could all exist in 1995. They make references to Rocky and Back to the Future as if these are at least semi-recent or still very much in the pop culture eye, which they were during that time period. So I'm saying 1995. Yeah, man. F*** the developers. I mean, yeah, the movies I mentioned were both released over a, I don't know, decade before 1995, and there's an abundancy of contradictory evidence in the game to that idea, but I feel, I feel like 1995 is probably the year Bully takes place in. Because, you know, f*** the developers. <laughs> We're not off to a good start, are we? Now, why 1995? Because that means the 15-year-old Jimmy Hopkins has five years to become James Earl Cash. James Earl Cash is convicted and put on death row in the year 2000 and executed, air quotes, in 2003, beginning the events of the game Manhunt. One of the strongest ties has got to be pointed out. Their physical resemblance and mannerisms are identical. Whoa, whoa. See that guy right there? Looks like he's hit rock bottom. Well, that guy's actually not even Jimmy Hopkins. That's actually me. I bet you're all wondering how I ended up in this wacky situation. Well, it all began in the summer of 86. Their physical resemblance and mannerisms are identical. Yeah, because, you know, it would actually make sense for somebody at age 15 to go from looking like this 
to this. You know, it makes perfect sense for somebody who's 15 to age this quickly within 8 to 5 years. And as far as facial features go, there's a pretty big difference there as well. <laughs> Don't you think? Cash has a slimmer nose, a slightly different skin tone, thicker eyebrows, bigger eyes, and a differently shaped head. When James Hopkins has to deal with bullies, he beats them with no remorse. When he has to use a bottle rocket to pretty much blind children, he feels nothing. When James Cash has to kill somebody with a knife and a plastic bag, he doesn't grunt, he doesn't flinch, he just does it. Both of them feel nothing, and I don't mean that in a horrible sociopathic they get off on it. I mean, literally, they don't feel good or bad. It is just like taking out the trash of them. The, this objective needs to be completed, this child needs to lose his eyes, this man needs to be strangled with piano wire. It's what they do, and they do it well. Okay, let's, let's get this out of the way, because apparently Dreamcast Guy just forgot about this. There is a big difference, a huge difference between defending yourself against a group of bullies and smashing somebody's skull to pieces with a baseball bat. I don't know, man. I don't, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like you're uh, grasping at straws. This is so strong of a tie together. I mean, they look so similar, their voices are similar. Their voices are similar? Okay, fair enough. Let's do a quick comparison, shall we? You didn't f***ing do one, so I guess I'll just do it. You coming or what? Move your ass! Come on, lady! Stick close and keep quiet. I'll lead the way. Move when I move. I'll be back soon. Lay low here for a while. Stay here, out of trouble. Hold tight. I'll be right back. Hold up. I'll check ahead. Follow me. Move it. Come here. Man, this place sure is crap. Perfect for a little demolition. I bet you say that to all the boys. You bastards are all going down. Finally, you show some balls. Where's Johnny? He can try. All right, Gord. Back me up. The guy who's gonna kick your ass. I don't know about you, but I detect a pretty big difference in both speech mannerisms and voice. Not to mention that James Earl Cash can very seldom be heard speaking. Jimmy Hopkins, on the other hand, has a tendency to speak. A lot. So much so that Rockstar actually had to cut a bunch of his mission-related voice lines in Bully. They act similar. They act similar. Hmm. Hmm. Jimmy Hopkins, a 15-year-old kid in a mischievous action-adventure game, acts in a similar fashion to James Earl Cash, a no-remorse type of convict in a stealth horror action game. <laughs> do, do I need to refute this? I mean, like, I feel like by just describing this argument, I have eviscerated this point. Alright, now I know that's light evidence. Let's move on to some other connections that tie the two universes together. That's a... What? Wait, hold on. Alright, now I know that's light evidence. That's light evidence? But you just said that this is so strong of a tie together. This is so strong of a tie together. Alright, now I know that's light evidence. You just said that this is so strong of a tie together. Seriously, within 10 seconds you went from this is a strong tie together to yeah, I know that's light evidence. Anyway, let's proceed. The f in Bully, when you go to town, sometimes the townspeople actually refer to the latest Starkweather film and discussing what they think of it. This is very interesting because it ties directly into Manhunt. I actually agree with this. A lot of people don't know this, but Manhunt and Bully, and even GTA, all take place within the same universe. The director, the person who builds that horrible gauntlet of murder and madness for Cash to go through, is actually called the director for a reason. He used to be a big time film director, Lionel Starkweather, but upon his fall from grace decided to start directing snuff films. So we know that Starkweather was already big in the movie business and relevant when Jimmy was a kid. So that gives him five years to fall from grace and turn to snuff films as Cash is growing up and becoming the murderous James Earl Cash we see in Manhunt. A very interesting link. Now this point is based entirely on the previous argument he made about Bully taking place in 1995. Bully takes place in 1995 because I feel like it does and f the developers. Therefore, it is likely that Starkweather was actually at the top of his game during Jimmy's time at the Academy. This entire point is based on Bully supposedly taking place in 1995 
and the fact that Starkweather is mentioned by townspeople and Bully on occasion. Which, by the way, just amounts to Bully and Manhunt being connected. As far as I'm concerned, this point has no value at all. You're basing this point completely on a terrible argument you made in the beginning of this video. By refuting that prior argument, I've destroyed this point in the process, and I did not even realize this until I'm recording myself making this argument now. <laughs> so, I don't know. Thank you, past Swegta, for destroying this point unintentionally in the process. In Manhunt, the director holds James's family hostage and says, Every time my men find you, we're going to execute another member of your family, forcing James to silently, stealthily kill every single person in the level in order for his family to survive. We see that he has a mother, a father, possibly a sister, and a brother. The director even mentions, like, Oh, sir, you're not very close with your family. I know you haven't seen him in a while, implying that even then he's very estranged from his family. Like, a boy who was abandoned as a child. Now, I am saying that James probably got picked up from the boarding school at the end of Bully, but after that, he probably isn't going to be very close with his family. He has a new dad, possibly new brothers and sisters. What do these people mean to him? Nothing. He's just waiting, serving time till he's 18 to get out of that family, make his own life. So when they're suddenly held hostage by the director, he wants to save them because he wants to save anyone he can. But when he sees them killed by the director anyways, it fills him with rage. Rage at the family he can now never know. A family that abandoned him as a child and now he will never be able to fully connect with them. So let's go over the whole timeline in summary. Born, raised, mother remarried a bunch of times, gets married the fifth time, drops him off at boarding school, goes through hell in a handbasket, survives by crushing all of his foes, picked up, mom gets divorced for a fifth time, gets remarried for a sixth time, giving him the last name Cash legally, he gets into trouble, maybe kills a few people, goes on the run for a short time, is caught, is taken to prison, sentenced to death, escapes execution, fights his way through the manhunt gauntlet, kills Starkweather, and finally earns his freedom, albeit now without a family to his name. This is how you go from Jimmy Hopkins the boy to James Cash, the murdering man. This has been another Dreamcast Guy Theory. Thanks so much for watching. That's quite a lot of assumptions you have to make for this argument to actually work. Jimmy's mom is probably still married to Jimmy's stepdad at the end of Bully. And if that's true, then there's a possibility that Jimmy's stepdad already has kids of his own. And if Jimmy's mom changes her legal name after marrying Jimmy's stepdad, then it is a possibility that Jimmy's last name would become Cash. And if Jimmy's relationship with his entire family is still unstable, then it is a possibility that Jimmy is simply waiting to turn 18 so that he can immediately start a life of his own. And if he did, then it is a possibility that he moved to Carcer City. And if that's true, then it is possible that his family also did. For whatever reason. And if that's true, then it would make sense for Jimmy Hopkins to really be James Earl Cash and for Jimmy's family to be captured in Manhunt 1. Oh my god. I don't know about you, audience, but I find this argument to be kind of weak. When you have to rely on a minimum of six ifs for an argument to work, then you're probably just as well off guessing. I guess I'll give you my final thoughts on this video before I wrap things up. This is not a bad video commentary or editing wise, it's decent, but I think that this theory holds no water at all. I've yet to see an argument that doesn't rely solely on vague similarities in appearance between Jimmy Hopkins and James Earl Cash, nor have I seen an argument that isn't contingent on multiple assumptions. If you agree with what I had to say, leave a like, if you disagree, leave a dislike and let me know why in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for this video, you folks, as always, stay classy. Peace. Stop! Uh, Knock it off! Sorry?